Greetings from Oita City. This is in Kyushu and behind me right here is the red brick building of Oita. Now this building has a pretty unique history. A lot of it which I didn't know until I finally came to Oita for the first time just a couple of days ago. And I'm talking about Oita City. Um, Beppu is a famous onsen town nearby here but I'm gonna show you Oita City because there's a lot of really interesting stuff here. Ah, manhole! Check this out. That right there is a really cool manhole cover. I'm kind of, I'm what you call, I'm what you call a manholer. I mean, I collect these manhole cards. Hold on a second. How's everybody doing today? Check this out. I have a manhole cover card. There it is right there. It tells the history. I love the manhole covers. All right, anyways, this is the building. It is, it has a pretty cool history. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go inside and show you something that they discovered not too long ago that was lost in history. Now this is the Akai Renga, Renga Khan, written up there. It means red Renga, means red brick, and Khan is just hall or building. And it's got a pretty cool history. Here we go. Over here, they've actually listed. Hey! Over here, they've actually listed some of the history. Uh, I'm going to show you the picture of what it used to look like. What it was built. Now, this building... This building was completed in 1913, which is Taisho 2. You see it written right here. Taisho 2, which is uh, the Taisho era. And here's a picture of it being constructed and down here, completed. It is a rainy day here in Oita. And then in World War II in 1945, uh, there was a really big bombing raid by the Allied forces. A lot of the city was devastated. It was destroyed, including a, a lot of this building, but some of it still remained. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna go inside this building this, if, if this style looks familiar to some of you, it's because the designer also designed Tokyo Station in uh, the Marunouchi side of Tokyo Station. Uh, I don't want to get his, his name wrong. Tetsuno, Tetsuno Kingo, I think his name was. Tetsuno Kingo. He was the designer of Tokyo Station in 1914, and he designed this a year before. So this has a lot of history. Um, the red bricks were very popular in the Taisho era, um, after the Meiji era. And this is kind of, it looks kind of foreign looking, but this is the style from that era. As you can see in Oita City, these days though, a lot of the buildings don't look like that at all. They kind of look, you know, like normal J Japanese buildings. Hey there, Mr. Das. Indeed, indeed. This is what the area looks like. And over there, there's a Shoten guy, and a Shoten guy is a covered mall. Right there. So this is pretty close to the center of the city. Over there is Oita Station, which you can see over here. And let's go inside. Let's go inside. Now, Oita Bank. This is the former Oita Bank head office, and it's been changed now into a store called Oita Maid. But Oita Bank still has ATMs here. Now this is one of the first things that you'll see when you come in here. This is a leftover from the reconstruction of the bank. Um, in, gosh, so the building burnt down in 1944. It was reconstructed in 1949. And at that time, it was reconstructed kind of differently, meaning the ceilings are high now in this building, but back then they were much, much lower. It was connected to about where you could see where the level is here, but it was later on that they completely redesigned it the way it was originally designed in, in uh, 1913. But this is a reminder of the Showa era. So this building goes through three eras, Taisho, Showa, and now we're in Heisei, and that's what this kind of new style is, you can see. And right now, it's a beautiful, beautiful cafe that was opened this year in March. It's pretty exciting. You still got ATMs, though. I mean, come on, the background is, it's a bank. 
Um, over here, they have a little bit of the history, and there's some really interesting stuff here. Akarenga Khan. Akarenga also means red bricks for those joining us. And uh, on here is written all the history. I'm gonna go through it a little bit to you. In th this is the Meiji era, and then here's Taisho. There's only one. This is built in Taisho two, and then there's the Showa era where it started. This is when it was destroyed. Showa twenty, which is 1945 in July, the building was destroyed, and four years later the building was re reconstructed in April of 1949. And th there's a brief. It, nothing's in English, but I think you get the idea. This is what the building looks like. The roof was built in the Showa era, and this was built in the Heisei era, and this was built in the Taisho era. So it, it spans three generations. Here's the designer who also designed Tokyo Station. This is uh, Tetsuno Kingo from Tokyo. And he came here to design the Oita Bank building. Right. I'm gonna show you some of the neat stuff, but the most impressive thing is, all right, I got so many things I wanna talk about. See the wall right here that's all white? This wall is the way that the bank looked like when it was re reconstructed after World War II. This wall was also the same way. Check it out. This wall was also just completely white. And it wasn't until this year that they re got rid of the white and they found the brick again. This is the original brick wall that survived the bombings in 1945. And you know how you know? Do you, know, you can see what we call the sumi. This is the charred, charred wood that was part of the foundation of the wall that's still here today. And this is all from 1944. Again, there's the charcoal in there, look at that the wood that was burned. And there are some places where the charcoal, the sumi, the charcoal was too weak and I believe they replaced it. Let me see over here. Ah, right here. This is new wood, right? Obviously, this looks like new wood. This is replacing um, very weak foundation in it, but these here still remain after so many decades. And it's kind of a reminder of the history of where, where Oita was in 1945. A completely flattened city it was just devastated. And when you see this, it, it really is a reminder of where we came from. So I'm glad that Oita Bank has preserved this building the way that it has. Not a lot of places would do that. Yeah, it survived the bombing of 1944 here in Oita. Not, there wasn't much else. I don't think anything else really survived completely, completely devastated. And now these days we have this. This wall is still here. The rest of it is all been reconstructed. These pillars here that you see are from the reconstruction in 1949. And when they re renovated this building, they decided to keep these, these in, these pillars in. And the reason why is because it kind of, uh, it takes you down from the Taisho era to the Showa era to the Heisei era, it spans three generations. And that's kind of, kind of cool. And here in front, they, ha they have a lot of stuff from Oita. And we're gonna show that to you in a minute. So if you're interested in that, just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. But there's one thing that's really, really interesting. Do you see this clock here? Check it out. Look at this clock. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the top part has nothing in there. Do you know why that would be like this? That's a question to you. If you know, or you have an idea, chat in right now. What do you think? I'm going to ask one of the, one of the bankers about for some help here. This is Mishiro-san. Hi. Hello, from Oita Bank. Uh, it's 
ですね。今年の三月、はいはい。From this month in March it started。なんで守りたかった？建物。そう。うん、これはすごくまあ古い歴史のある建物で、うんえー、まあ東京駅を作った。タツノさんっていうタツノキンゴキンゴさんが設計をして、東京駅より一年早くああいやできた、そう置いて兄弟みたいな建物、yeah、そう置いて wanted to preserve the history、uh, that was behind it。This building is、uh, significant because it was designed by like how I told you、uh, by Tatsuno Kingo、uh, who designed Tokyo Station。In 1914, but this one is a kind of a source of pride. Was built one year before Tokyo Station. That's kind of a big deal. So, I was in Oita Ginkong, and I was in the middle of the day. Ah, so this was the head office for Oita Bank for a very long time. Now it looks completely different. Now it looks completely different. すごく素敵なものをプロデュースして商品にして販売をするショップ、大分メイドというショップにしています。Right. So this this was for a long time the head office, and now it's just a place where they can highlight some of the stuff that they've made here in Oita. And I think that's a really great idea. So the bank has, instead of making this、um, the head office again, which you could probably easily do in a historical building, it's just a way to highlight the prefecture, and that's pretty cool. I kind of wish more people would do that. Uh, 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 Right. This was the height of the、uh, first floor at, during the reconstruction in 1949.、Mm. Uh, wow. Yeah. それは1913年、大正2年、この感じでしたかほぼほぼこの形だったと思いますね。その後、ちょっと修復が入っているかもしれませんけども、うん、基本的な設計はもうこういう形だったと思いますね。Yeah, this was kind of the feeling of the high ceilings from that style that、um, was taken out in the reconstruction. And now it's returned. I was pointing to this line here. That was the height of the ceiling before they re renovated the building. So they've made it wider and it's given it a hall like feeling to the interior. But what I like here also is if you take a look at the left here, sorry, right here, this is. 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 Yeah, this is Tautona. Tautona Coffee. It's a specialty coffee shop that's locally made. I like that, preserving local brands. I'm a big supporter of small businesses. So, yeah, that's really cool to do. I kind of read this in advance. So, 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 so. I kind of read this in advance. If you take a look here. これ。Yeah. Do you see these chairs and tables here too? So we see. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. So when they took down the walls here、uh, to renovate the building, they didn't want to waste the wood. So what they did was they took the wood that was part of the foundation of this bank. And they recreated, they reused it in, and made it into the furniture. So they order made it furniture 
from, from the wood that was put away. I'm just gonna take you a little bit over here. You can see that's not an easy thing to do. They've taken the wood and, and the wood is not perfect, you see. It's not perfect and that's kind of the imperfections of it show you the history and the wear of the building. So this table is made from the wood of the foundation of the building and that's kind of a way to, to, to preserve the history. So whenever you sit down in the chairs here, you're sitting down in the building. That's really cool. Check that out and you can see it's, it's all been order made to fit into this bank. It's like these little small details I think that if nobody tells you, you might not, you might not know them. Um, Bach Kenneth writes in, have you ever considered living in an RV for four months and traveling around Japan that way? Um, no, but that's probably a good idea. And Miss Clark, grab a drink on me, thank you. And Nathan, thank you. Here is a little something for the ads I've been blocking on your videos, by the way. Now we don't have to put any ads in. Thank you very much. Wow. So, sticky. いい idea でした。誰考えたこの idea。Good. ありがとうございます。Thank you so much. Yeah. So they came up with this idea to preserve the history of it, and they moved the head office of the bank over to another building. I don't think there's a lot of people who would do that. Um, a lot of banks that would do that. So I kind of have to give them credit. I'm here making. I'm actually here in Oita to make an episode of my main channel um, in a place nearby that's a big attraction. And when they told me about the history of this building, I was like, yeah, this is something I think people should know about because it's pretty cool. And I don't think anybody's ever covered it, right? Yeah, Judy, right? I don't think anybody's ever covered this kind of thing. Now, I'm going to get you to this clock here that I introduced before. The reason why the time is like this is because this is bank time. Do you get it? 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's bank time. So the numbers are when people are working and they're here, and the numberless is when nobody is here. So right now, um, yeah, where's the other hand? <laughs> but basically, this clock is supposed to be in, in uh, bank time because this used to be a bank. This used to be a bank. Um, I'm going to show you now a little bit of the products that they have on sale here because I think it's kind of neat. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know a lot about Oita Prefecture. I've been here uh, a couple of times before. I've been to every prefecture in Japan at least twice. So this is my fourth time to Oita. So, but I still don't know a lot about this prefecture. So when I came into this building and I was able to look around and see all the neat stuff, it was a chance for me to see, it, it, not so much to to buy it, although I did buy, I'm gonna show you one thing that I bought last time I was here, but it's kind of a way for you to get an idea of what what fuels or what what um, pushes this economy, what makes this place really strong. So check it out over here. Hey, Mr. Das, yes, I was right on once in the back time. Very good, yeah. Good answer. So these are waters from Oita Prefecture. Um, this one comes from uh, Beppu, which is the town nearby. And these come from Oita City. This is um, naturally carbonated water. One of the few natural carbonated water spots in Japan comes from Oita. So it's like a Perrier spot, Oita Prefecture. Got some of the best water in Japan. And here they make some sake and shochu. Because, because there's a lot of volcanic um, water bubbling out of the ground they also have a lot of minerals coming and you'll see a lot of things like cosmetics and and face packs and then you a lot of things with extra minerals and nutrients in it stuff that's good for the skin here we have what is this fumus like a mousse it's interesting tau organic kitchen gosh a lot of stuff i don't know Binya Kauda. Oh, this is Ryu. This is chili pepper oil. This is all made here in Oita. Let's go over here. Oh, let me show you what I did buy last time I was here. This is so cool. Check it out. Right there. All right. I, I don't know. I thought this was really cool. Check it out. Let's check, check it out. I got one of these last time I was here. This is, it looks like a piece of bamboo, right? It's a piece of bamboo. But actually, actually, 
It's a pen. <laughs> I don't know how they got the pen in there, but it's really cool and I got one of these last time. It's a really creative idea to use a piece of bamboo as a pen. And those are about, I guess it's about five, four to five dollars for one of those. And here's the designer from Oita that came up with the idea to use bamboo for pens. It's kind of neat. Some textiles. These are neat too. These are cups made out of wood. The bamboo. It's light, it could be bamboo. Oh, look at this, this is really beautiful, beautifully made. Sample. <laughs> I was like, what is, Sam P-L-E, who is that? Oh, sample. That took me a second. Yeah, all right, Japan also has some of the best glass, look at this. Glass makers have put this together. I know Hakodate up in Hokkaido is very famous for glass. Um, is Otaru, Otaru near Sapporo has really, really good glass, but this is well done as well. Get these, a candlestick holder. I like the naturalness of the bubbles that are still in there. I guess it could be Mount Fuji, looks like maybe now. It's pretty cool. Don't break it. Kona Moon, you're right, be careful. A couple other, other things that I want to show you. Check it out, they have some really, really cool knives in here. And cutlery made from wood. I kind of like that, I dig that. Each knife and each um, piece of cutlery has, has its own personality, right? Kind of like that. Crack open one of those Oita sake bottles on me. <laughs> oh, jeez. But the bank people are over there, they're watching me. I, I don't know, can I do that? I, I will. I will, I will. These are really cool too. I saw these last time I was here. This is about a hundred, a little bit over a hundred dollars, okay? But it's, it's like a very, very thin piece of wood. Look at that. Let's see, I don't, I don't think it will break if I... I should put some lotion on my, my skin here. Look at that. I don't know how they do that, but it's, a, it's just a piece of wood. It's very interesting. I like the design of this. This one's even goes in another level. This one's about $120. It's got a pretty good shape to it. It is really beautiful. But I like, I like how they've, They've taken a historical building and made it a, like a place where they could feature local crafts and foods and goods. I like that. I, I wish more people would do that, you know? I wish more people would do that. Oh, and here's... Wait, I made, and they launched this this year. This is a good idea as a building or a place where they can feature the locally made products. I like that a lot. Oh, check this out. Okay. Since we can drink this tea. I know something's gonna go wrong. すみません、これは何ですか、このお茶。はい。ちょっと説明する。It's not mouthwash. Although that's the that's the cup size I use for mouthwash, so. はい。イチョハ、こちらです。あ、イチョハ。イチョハ、わかりますかね。ま、全然知らない。Oh, this is the tea. Herbal tea. 
一丁あ、oh, あ、一丁、丁。あ、一丁。一丁、葉っぱ。ビーフ、ビーフです。It's good for the stomach. <笑>お腹がいいね。はい。お腹に優しい。<笑>いいです。Yeah, yeah, that's right. I got that right. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. <笑> From the ginkgo trees. Very, very well done. Thank you very much. Very well said. These are from ginkgo leaves. Kona Moon writes in. Very well said. ギンコキーの葉っぱでしょ<笑>そうそうそうそう、これですね、その葉っぱから。You're right, Mr. Moon, you've just won. <laughs> you have won, my friend. Well done, well done.、Um, also, we have some, yeah, $10 for one large pack. I don't think there's, no, there's not one large pack. Hold on, let me set the record straight here. All right. Is it one large pack? Could be right. Maybe you are right.、Um, not, not pack of Haitano. A Juni? All right, there's 12 packs. Who said one pack for $10? 12 packs in there. Come on. I, but I could have been wrong. You could have been right. <laughs> you could have been right. I'm glad I asked.、Uh, here's another one from the Organic Kitchen. This is also a maker. Check it out. Look at this. What is this? Can I drink this? Wait, d u m m a i d select. Oh! So these are、um, Tao Organic Kitchen. So these are like juices, I think, but they're kind of expensive. Looks like Sioux? Maybe it's vinegar? What about Sioux? Syrup. Syrup. Whoa. All right, that's syrup. Sorry. It wrote here syrup. <laughs> it wrote here syrup. This is Makomo. And this is Nashi, I think. And this one is Akebi no something syrup. I can't read that. Looks good. Genzai no syrup. Oh, enzyme syrup. Enzyme syrup. I don't know if, how appetizing. Does that sound appetizing to you? Enzyme syrup. I'm sure it has something. There has to be something good with that. He put enzyme in here. Let's see what else we got here. We have some soap. Oh, oh, this looks really, really amazing. Look at this. Onsen soap made from onsen. Let me, let's give it a smell. Okay, so this area of Japan is known for its onsen.、Uh, lots and lots of onsen. And、uh, it's pretty cool. A lot of these, as I was saying before, a lot of these products come from, from onsen. Check it out. What are these? Is this candy? My first reaction is this is candy. Oh, these are, I know it's stones, but of what? Sometimes you gotta figure it out. So that's the name of, it, of the designer. H E B N E Y A Z A. Okay. So these come from the minerals of it, and I guess you can add these to the bath to make an onsen, like soap. I like it. You know, I often. Yeah, I give up. <laughs> to Otaku. Back home.、Um, I, in Tokyo, there aren't that many onsen that you can go to, but you can go to onsen towns and buy a special powder that's made there and you can sprinkle it into your own bath. If you do come to Japan, I, I highly recommend that you buy some of these. And you can create the same kind of onsen feeling from a hot bath at home by taking the powders and the essence of the bath that they've, they've taken from the water and add it into your own bath at home. And usually it's a couple of hundred yen, but it's, it's good for the skin, it's got lots of. Lots of、uh, minerals for the body, and that's something I think that's pretty, pretty good souvenir. It's a pretty good souvenir. Oh, this is soup dashi. This is for、um, making soup. 
I, I think, and this is also, what is this? This looks like, looks like biscuits. And uh, the, the main ingredient is sugar and salt though. Huh. It's hard, not, not a lot of this stuff is in, is in English. That's okay. Here's rice from this area. It's all pretty cool. Check it out. 300 grams. It's enough for maybe two, two, two portions or for maybe four, three people. Get the whole bag. It's cool. I like this. And then once again, this is a specialty cafe. I had a cup of coffee here. It was really good. I'm slightly caffeinated. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a pretty neat story, kind of a way to see a little bit of the history. For those of us joining, those of you joining, this wall survived the bombing of 1945, and you can still see remnants of the charred wood. Do you see that? These black patches are the charred wood left over from the bombing of 1945. And it's pretty neat to see um, that this wall is a source of pride for the local area because, you know, this town is a tough town. It's a tough town, Oita the city. They're gonna be having the um, Rugby World Cup here next year because it's a tough town. Rugby um, usually is in like steel towns where people are pretty, they're built strong. Oita is one of those towns and uh, they've seen a lot historically rebuilt from the ashes of 1945 and come back pretty strong. Very beautiful building inside. So if you're in Oita, you wanna wanna check this place out. The red building. Very cool. Any questions? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, that was fun. This is what Oita City looks like. Yeah, definitely hit that like button. If you're interested in this kind of content, if you like historical stuff, hit the like button as a way for indicate that I know that this is the kind of content that you want to see more of. Over here in the distance, uh, you can see some of the shops. There's a bus station and it's just listed all the places to go. There you go. If you're from Oita, you probably know where all these places are. I have no idea. And then there's the Shoten guy over there. I'll be here for another 30 hours and then I'm going back home. Um, the main purpose of this is to take you to one of the main attractions of Oita. That's what I'm doing here. But I thought it was a pretty cool chance to, to take a look at the Akairenga, the brick building of Oita, and show you a piece of the history. So, thank you so much for watching. I might do another live stream tomorrow, so definitely stay tuned. I appreciate all the support, everybody. I'm just coming this way for one last thing. If you do come to Oita, there's something that's pretty neat, I think, that might be a point of interest for you. In the distance there, there's a Christmas tree. This is, we've gone into bonus time because we passed 200 likes. If, you, if we can get to 300 likes, I might take you to something really cool at the end of the street. This is the Shoten guy. It's kind of a, uh, it's a big shopping mall. It's an indoor shopping mall that's kind of outdoors. They just put a cover on it. We call them in Japan, Shoten guy. And in the distance beyond that Christmas tree is something I thought was really cool that I, I think is worthy to introduce to you right now. So as soon as this light changes, I'm gonna take you there. Um, now the history of these kinds of places, this is going past the, the red building. Um, I'd say around World War II, before World War II, a lot of the people in communities would meet and talk at watering holes. It's where you would pump the water out and every family had, they didn't have plumbing, so every family had to go to the water pumps to get their water for cooking, for bathing, for lots of different reasons. And when plumbing came in and the sento, which is the public baths, sort of started in decline, less and less people start, have been talking to one another. 
it's kind of something that the older people um, will mention. Like the the sense of community is not as strong as in their era. And old people are always saying that the the other generation has changed or evolved. But I like what they've done here that kind of brings back that community feeling by taking things that um, younger people need and finding a way to bring people together. I love this. I'm going to show you that right now. This is going to be pretty cool because uh, <laughs> I, I thought this was really cool. We're going inside of the show 10 guy right now. All right, this is a big Christmas tree of Oita. This is where you'll find uh, a lot of shops, but it's that thing to the left of the Christmas tree that I want to take you to. It's a really, really curious looking, it almost looks like a Sakura tree, do you see that? That pink thing in the, in the left side. Yeah, so we're gonna pass this wreath. We're gonna go towards the family mart and we're gonna see this one thing I think, right now there's not a lot of people because it's a weekday so people are working or they're at school, but in the evenings there's a lot of people here. And this reminds me of that watering hole, the watering um, point in Japan where communities would come together and talk to one another. This is just like one of those cable uh, spindles, holders, and what they've done is take electrical, electrical through with it, and they've added a place where you can charge your phone. Check this out. And so at night, you'll see tons of people here plugged into this USB for community charging. So if your phone has needs a little bit of juice, instead of smoking, you can come here and charge your phone. There's tons of them here. I think this is a really, really cool idea. And it's free. What do you think of that? It's all about community. And I like the fact it's a nice little Sakura pink tree, tons of USB charging ports, because I'm gonna need to charge this phone because it's 50% battery life, but we roll with it. We roll with it. Mr. Das writes in again. Always a very much appreciative. John, how long before you get an Android phone you've been meaning to get? It's gonna be a while because I, I, I just got an iPhone XS and I'm not a big fan of it. The internal stabilization is a little bit too strong and it's, for me it's a little bit hard to use, but um, I think Android is, it's gonna be the next phone for sure. I don't know how long it's gonna be. So there you go. I'm gonna cross the street again. We're gonna say goodbye to Oita City for today. Thank you everybody for joining me. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. What'd you think of the history? Do you think more buildings I, it's, it's kind of an issue when you go to New York or you go to Chicago or you go to um, even London or other places. I think that we should find a way to um, integrate the buildings, the historical buildings, into the new foundations of new buildings. There's a way to try to preserve and protect the history that we had. Um, and we don't forget where our fathers came from. We don't forget where our grandfathers came from. I like what they did with this. What do you think? Should more communities do something like this? Is there a building in your community that they're gonna destroy, that they should protect? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye from Oita City, the capital of Oita Prefecture, and a pretty cool town. See you next time, everybody.